I think in a political sense, don't have an allopathic system. We have market capitalism. And in market capitalism, the people at the top want to stay at the top. I've almost never heard a person critical of complementary medicine that actually knew anything about it. All right, it's very unscientific to say something doesn't work if you haven't tried it. I got involved in complementary medicine because I instantly saw it do things that my medicine couldn't do. And I didn't throw away my medicine, I was just thrilled to add. But I'm a multifactorial person. I rarely think in terms of single cause or single treatment. And that in the area of wellness, you want to do as many areas of wellness as you possibly can all the time. This idea of best medicine is, uh, negates thousands of years of history of many very complex systems that however great the allopathic system is, the acupuncture is a completely different world and completely different world from the homeopathic system. And, and even within, say, body adjustments, whether it's Feldenkrais or chiropractic or osteopathic or even within chiropractic, there's straight chiropractics. One of the reasons I really like practicing with many practitioners is to have us all in on the fun, get a lot of opinions, know the person really well, be really honest with them and say, how can you affect your blood pressure if you don't like your work, don't like yourself, you know, don't like your marriage and, and you want some kind of drug or acupuncture or anything to lower it and you're not looking at those things. I, I don't like the phrase treating a patient with compassion. I like the idea of being a compassionate person for a healthy human community. When one thinks about treating a patient with compassion, there implies that maybe there's a time you don't treat them. Hopefully a, a healer is very humble, that they're open to new healing things. They have a good sound basis in the things that they know, that they're not afraid to refer, that they have a wide variety of people to refer to, that they do a follow-up and a long enough history to have a real sense of knowledge about the person. But the first step in health are all the things that are healthy. <laughs> on the individual level, all the wellness things, on the, on the human level and being healthy in your relationships and knowing really how to be a friend and to love all of humanity. And then environmental health, health of political systems, that, that the range of importance of health in the entire human world and in the non-human world is is being well and important medicine, but it's never mentioned in medical school. I hear friends of mine who teach in medical school say students are no longer really learning how to listen to a heart with a stethoscope because they immediately have it go get a echo or a stress test or a something so that, and when you only have 7.8 minutes with a patient, you're not actually being an allopathic physician by hearing six symptoms and doing a quickie exam, ordering a test and giving a prescription. That is not allopathic medicine in the history of allopathic medicine. If you only have five minutes with a patient, you know they have a virus, but instead of doing throat cultures or, or checking a culture, you'll just give them an antibiotic. And that's bad medicine. And there's a whole thing where a patient that goes home without anything isn't sure they were treated, which is a huge thing, and especially in the United States culture. What has taken over is greed and technology because that's where the highest incomes are. Clearly, technological greed medicine makes the worst mistakes numbers-wise. A lot because they're some of the most used people in serious situations. And the emergency room is America's family doctor. My first experience with complementary care was with acupuncture. I think I told you I had an aunt who couldn't do this. She had rheumatoid arthritis, hadn't lifted her arms above her head 15 or 20 years. After the first acupuncture treatment, you know, she, I, I could have been a, a faith healer. 
she put her arms over her head and she couldn't believe it, told everybody. And I made her two commitments to serve humanity and medicine and I've been a free doctor in every way for 40 years. And the other was how can I be an instrument of peace and justice? So I decided to only be happy the rest of my life, every day, all day long, but I was going to be disgustingly happy. And that meant wearing costumes, it meant uh, loving the world and playing and connecting. I'm an extreme extrovert even probably before I made those decisions. And I found a world really uptight around loving, really uptight around connecting and mistrust and hierarchy and all of those things. And what I noticed is that clowning was a trick to get love close, that in a clown costume I can do things to people that in a suit, there's no way I could do them. Saw that humor helped prevent burnout. It helped. Uh, humor is a real hierarchy killer. That humor is a painkiller. Humor sets an environment for cooperation and people getting along. It really, as a communal person, it really was essential to make the commune fun. And relationally with lovers, it's essential to have great relationship with a partner as a parent. So, I mean, the six qualities we insist on in a full-time staff at our hospital are happy, funny, loving, cooperative, creative, and thoughtful. Not as therapies, but as a context. If the environment is that way, it's the healthiest possible environment for our kind of medicine to then be practiced.